Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan, if you're new here, and I am a homeschooling mom of 10 years to six kiddos. Now today's video is going to be a video that is a walk through and do a lesson with me of All About Reading Level 3. Now this video I am making in response to the last video I posted which was all about my favorite and top recommended reading curriculums for learning to read. I will link that video down in the description below if that's something you're interested in going back and watching. But there were a couple of people who commented on that video that they just felt a little deterred in using this curriculum because it felt a little overwhelming. And I can see how that may, how you may feel that way because there are kind of a lot of moving parts to this, but it's actually a really easy program to teach. And so basically it comes with a student book that looks similar to this one, but these are all things that you are going to tear out and use. These are your student pages. None of them are written student pages. They are not consumable. A lot of people organize them in a binder system. I actually did that in the very beginning, but I actually prefer to use these plastic envelopes that I bought from Amazon and I just organize them by lessons and keep them in a box. <laughs> and when we need a new envelope, we just grab it and pull it out. And then we just pull out the pages that we need. Now, I have now used this with two kids and so all of my pieces are already cut out. So the overwhelming thing to you may be that you see all these student pages and trying to pull out the student pages and all that kind of stuff, it can be a little bit overwhelming. I could see that. However, if you just spend a, a couple of hours pulling out all the student pages and just organizing them, cut, go ahead and cut them out or have your kiddo cut them out beside you as you do it, um, and then organize them all out, then when you actually start the program, it's actually pretty easy. Now, the other thing that may be a little overwhelming is this board right here. There is a remedy to this. They actually do offer a letter tiles app, which makes it incredibly easy. We don't use the app anymore because our iPad is actually broken. And so until we get a new one, we are using the quote old school way of doing all about reading. It's fine, we've done it both ways and it, it's still effective. So this can be a little overwhelming to set up, but there's actually a diagram in the back of the teacher's manual that shows you how to set it up for the level of all about reading that you're on. So don't be overwhelmed by this. There is a diagram. Also, like I said, the app is a great remedy to that because the app, all you do is you select the level that you're using and then you select the lesson and it puts the letter tiles that you need for that lesson on there. And then you just use it that way. So that's an, an, a remedy to make it a lot easier to work with. So organizing the student sheets, using your letter tiles app or setting up your board. And then of course you have your readers and your word cards and phonogram cards. Each one of these does have the lesson and the word number on it. So they're in order. You just pull out the ones that you need for whatever lesson and it will tell you in your teacher book here. Now I'm going to dive into this. We actually are on a lesson today that requires reading. So we're not going to use the letter tiles today, but after we go through today's lesson, I will kind of walk you through the lesson that we did the previous day so you can see what the lessons look like where you're working on a specific skill or working with the letter tiles. Okay, so we are doing lesson 28 and we're going to be reading the slurp. <laughs> which is in this book. I think it might actually be the last one in the volume one of level three, and then we'll be moving on to the second reader. So as you look at this, it will tell you which swing into reading pages. That means the student pages. So we have them here. There is this page, which is just his 
words um, and phrases and things like that. Uh, but sometimes the, it is a front and back page. Then we have these, which are part of the pages that are just cut apart. So the first thing that you do is you start with review. You're going to start with any phonogram cards that need reviewing, which he's already mastered all of his phonograms. And then hit any word cards that he needs to review, which actually he doesn't need to review any of those. <laughs> so he has already mastered those as well. So now we are going to move on to the new teaching, which here we have the first activity, which is using these pages right here. Um, and so it tells you things you can say, which I usually phrase it in my own way. And then you do the little activity it says. Do you know what a help wanted ad is? Uh, no. Okay, so these were really popular back when people read newspapers mm -hmm. a lot more often. They would have a section in the newspaper that was all about different jobs that were available. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they would have help wanted ads, and that means that they need um, people that it's different kinds of jobs that are available, basically. All right, so you are going to read each la ad out loud, and then I want you to put them on the table in the order that is most interesting to you and least interesting, okay? Okay, so we need a person to work in our bake shop. If you like cakes, muffins, and sweet things, we have just the job for you. Help wanted baseball player. Okay, so now that he has finished that activity, now we move on to the next one, which is read the warm-up sheet for the slurp. Okay? okay? And if they have any issues with decoding words, there are some little tips down here for ones that they may need help with. And so there is a help there if you need it. Eat early, really dreams. Please reach fear convinced. convinced. Good job. Babysit. So now that we've finished that, he is going to go ahead and put it up in here. And then we're going to talk about some vocabulary um, and take some time to activate some prior knowledge before we start to read this. So, um, so have you ever heard <laughs> of someone slurp their coffee? Or their food. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah. Can you do a slurping sound? <laughs> okay. So how would how might you slurp juice? <laughs> in the United States, it's considered very rude to slurp, but in Japan, slurping is actually considered to be polite. It's a sign that you're enjoying your food, so it's a compliment to the chef. Interesting, huh? We're going to read the slurp. So can you pay, turn to page 189? Okay, and so we are going to read this. Now what you can do is it will tell you sometimes at a certain page to ask questions. Um, this is go only going to have us talk about things after he's done reading. So we're going to read through the slurp. Well, he's going to read through the slurp. Um, and then we're going to talk about this. And then we're going to have another activity here. The slurp. Ooh, the slurp. There he is. Greeley gazed at the Hope Wanted ads in the paper. There was one job left that he hadn't tried. Maybe today would be his lucky day. I'd better not tell them that I'm a slurp monster. When it was his turn, Greeley sat in front of the three kids. Mel was just a cute little boy. But Sage and Dolly were very stern girls. Okay, so he just finished, and now we're going to talk about this. So, in the slurp, Greeley has to convince the other kids that he is the best monster for the job. So, how does he end up pers persuading them? What is that? Persuading? Convincing. Oh, um... He said I could jump out of a closet and scare you. Mm -hmm. uh, 
he was he uh makes the best peanut butter and jelly in town. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> uh and it, yeah. Yeah. So there's a few examples. But yeah. what was he hiding from them that he could what? That he was a slurp monster. Yeah. And when it was finally revealed, when he slurped in front of them, what did they think? That he couldn't stay. Why? They thought it was what? Gross. Yeah, they thought it was gross. But then uh, Mel, the little brother, uh, uh, thought it was funny and he... And, uh, Really, uh, he started. Yeah, he started eating and drinking. Yeah, because he was slurping like him, yeah. right? And okay. The little boy only uh, ate steam beans and ice cream. <laughs> Ew, gross. That's like more disgusting than. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah. So today you're gonna imagine an alternate ending. Okay. Can you make up an alternate meaning? He would, then, or ending, I mean. Then Greeley would walk out the door very sadly. Yeah, and it would have a sad ending. Who likes a sad ending? Not me. Not me. I don't either. I, I like that one much better. Yeah. All right, so after you finish all of that, then you have read aloud Tom. Read aloud to your student for 20 minutes. Sometimes he reads it to me. Sometimes we read together. And so it says to try buddy reading for expression and practicing expression. So now that he has finished this, because we're going to do read aloud Tom all together here in a little bit, he is going to put his sticker on lesson 28. And there's these cute little monkey stickers that comes with this level. And then that is the end of our reading lesson for the day. So because our lesson was a lesson where we read, I want to walk you through the previous lesson that we did. This one is going to be looking at a specific phonogram, the EA. And so it tells you everything that you need to pull out, your word cards, which are these, which we've already pulled those out because he already mastered those. Um, and then uh, this phonogram card, the EA. And then also the letter tile EA, and then the swing into reading pages, which are these cute little seals. And they're reading the little snowflakes to practice the EA sound. And then a front and back fluency sheet. So those are the two pages. And then of course you have your letter tiles. And it tells you, you know, to go ahead and pull out the um, EA tile. So I'm going to put that in the workspace because that's what we're going to be working with. So it, li it literally just walks you through everything. Of course, you have the review section I mentioned before, but you teach the phonogram EA. It has the different sounds that EA makes and you do that together. And then you move the EA to the workspace. So now you work with the letter tiles and it's actually um, you that does these letter tiles. So the first word I would pull out is leaf. Okay, and you literally just follow the prompts. And we don't always need to do the like really segmented sounding out, especially with him. And so, you know, you just go at whatever pace your student has. Then you're going to change it to heat, then neat, and then you're going to do all of these different words on your letter with your letter tiles here. So after you do that, you're going to work on labeling syllables. And this is something that is taught in this earlier in like level one and level two. It teaches all the different syllables, which are these right here. And they learn to break apart a two or more syllable word, or even just a one syllable word, keep it together. And then they would label this one like this. It's the vowel team syllable. Um, and then you just do the next word. So after you go through all the work with the letter tiles, which really doesn't take all that long, 
Um, then you move on to the activity sheet. For this one, normally I do cut them out, but for this one, I was like, literally, you're just reading words. So we're just gonna read the different little snowflakes. So that's all we did. <laughs> Then we practice the word cards. So these fall, don't follow a particular rule and they are called leap words. So they're kind of like sot words. Then you move on to the fluency sheet. Now I have seen some people that don't make their kids do the whole fluency sheet. I actually do, um, but it's also not a struggle, like an, an intense struggle. Now there has been times where I knew we needed to cut a lesson in half for one of my sons that has dyslexia. And so we worked on maybe one side of it. And then just after we did that, then we ended the lesson and then the next day came back to it, reviewed whatever this stuff was and threw the cards and then went over the back side of the fluency sheet and then um, finished the lesson that way. So. Remember, you're only at about 20 minutes per lesson. I mentioned in my video that I did the last time that we typically, if we're close to finishing a lesson and it's going well, we typically will go over that 20 minute mark and finish out the lesson. But there have been times where we have taken advantage of the 20 minutes and halved the lesson and come back to it the next day to make sure that there is mastery for that concept. So, and then of course you end each time, you do have a read aloud time where you're reading to your student. Um, and then there is some different little challenges or things to focus on um, during that time. So as I said, I hope that you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions, put them down below and I will see you guys on future videos. Thanks so much guys and have a blessed day.